Hey what's up everyone welcome to FX Maniac this is Sayyid Mahmoud Amiri again and in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to create a beautiful particle advection effect using Phoenix FD and Typeflow so I just put in a little watch product here and I didn't get the time to render a couple of different shots so I just rendered out this top view so it looks pretty cool and uh, yeah we'll get started with this uh, but before getting started with the tutorial I just want to thank everyone who joined my patreon page to support me and get some awesome project files as well so if you haven't joined and you want to support me and get some awesome project files you're definitely welcome to join my patreon alright so we'll go into 3d studio max and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plane that will basically you know the particles will be on top of this plane so I do want to make sure this in the center of the image and the other thing you want to make sure is if you go to customize unit setup you want to use the metric system centimeters and one unit is one centimeter okay so we'll cancel that and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a smoke simulation with Phoenix FD and then use that to drive the motion of the particles using tight flow so for now I'm just going to hide the plane so I'll create a tube here for now so I'm just going to create a tube in the center give it a bit of a thickness and a bit of height and then I'll just give it like uh, 14 segments height and 30 segments on the side so if you hit F4 you see the sides here and what I want to do is apply a noise modifier here so if hit N the noise will come up and then I'm, I'm just going to set the scale to like 9 turn on fractal and set the strength to 10 on each of the three axes but you can see it's looking very weird because we don't have a lot of detail uh, that really doesn't matter because we can apply a turbo smooth and give it like two levels and now it looks good alright so what you want to do is uh, you know first you need to set up how how many frames or how long the, you want the simulation to be so I want it to be 10 seconds so I'm just gonna go to time configuration set the length to 300 frames and hit OK because we want to turn on the animate noise option so it'll only give us the 100 frame but we'll just drag it to 300 frames and now you will see that we have this uh, you know moving object uh, if the speed is not right what you can do is you can either increase the frequency to make it faster or decrease it to make it slower so 0.3 I guess is a good number here and what we want to do is we want to sort of animate this uh, you know scaling up so what you want to do is you want to hit N and probably I want it to be like till 100 frame so I'm just gonna go to 100 frame hit R and scale it up just a little bit to create a keyframe here and I'm just gonna go to the first frame and selecting make sure you select the scale tool or hit R and then you can just right click on the value uh, to sorry uh, make sure that you get the uniform scale because you need to right click and all of the three axes should be zero so now we can see that it scales up but we also want it to rotate right so what you want to do is go to like 150 frames and just give it a couple of degrees of rotation so now if I play this back by hitting uh, the uh, slash key next to the shift key so now you'll see that we have this uh, cool object that is moving and rotating so this will be used as an emitter to drive the smoke okay so what I'm going to do is I'll go and create my Phoenix FD uh, grid fire and smoke so you just want to make sure you make it big enough so that it encompasses the whole sort of plane area but then you don't want to give it too much height because we we will not need it anyway so uh, what you want to do is you can go into the grid and I do want the grid to be adaptive with the smoke and that means that you know if the smoke simulation gets outside the boundaries of this box the box will expand itself so that's that's helpful because we don't want it to cut off here uh, you know so the other thing we need to go to dynamics and turn the gravity to zero because we don't want any gravity 
and that's basically it if you want to give it some more steps you can give it but I think this is not like a heavy high quality simulation we just need the motion of the particles and in order to do that it's very important that you need to go to the output menu and output the grid speed and that will basically output the motion of the grid that you can use inside Typeflow. Alright, so what I'm going to do is go to preview, make sure to turn on enable in viewport and just hit simulate and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so nothing seems to be working because we haven't really added an emitter. So silly of me to not, you know, like not add an emitter. So what you can do is go to your Phoenix FD toolbar. Just click here. If you don't have it, just right click. And you can have, if you install Phoenix FD, there's this toolbar. So click on this emitter and just drag it out here and make sure to add this object as an emitter. All right, so the settings are fine. Output velocity to 10. If you want more uh, smoke and uh, fire, you can just increase this, but I think in this case it's fine. And once again, I'm just going to hit simulate and hopefully this time there will be no issues. All right, so I went ahead and simulated about 200 frames and it looks pretty cool. I mean, this simulation is not that high quality but that's not what we need we just need the fluid motion of the smoke to drive the motion of the particles and uh, if at some point you want the particles to you want the emitter to stop emitting smoke you can just like uh, keyframe this hit N and just move away set it to like 10.1 uh, just a small change and then you can just go and set it to zero so after this these frames it will stop emitting smoke but in this case we got what we need and now it is time to move on to Typeflow. So I'm just going to hide the Phoenix FD source and the Phoenix FD grid and this object. And I'm going to turn on my plane. So I'll go to the create panel, go to standard primitives and Typeflow is here. So I'll go here and open the editor and I'll just go ahead here, uh, create a birth operator, make sure it is zero to zero and set it to at least 20,000 for now because we're going to need a lot more particles and in the final sim of this I ended up using 1.5 million particles which is still not a lot but you know, it looks pretty decent for that so you can use a lot more so we see we got this really nice detail here so the more the number of particles the more it's going to look cooler but of course it's going to take a lot of time so I'm just going to go back here I'll add a hit tab I'll add a position object and if for some reason you're new to Typeflow or you don't know the basics of Typeflow I've got many tutorials about Typeflow which you can go ahead and check out so I've got the Typeflow for absolute beginners course uh, which is here so we've got the Typeflow cloth basics spline basics a lot of Typeflow tutorials are there growth and uh, you know particles motion and cube animation space and everything so I've got a lot of Typeflow tutorials you can also go to the playlist and we've got Typeflow tutorials playlist which you can go ahead and check it out so yeah you're if you have any problems make sure to you know check out the related videos or you can tell me in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to answer them alright so uh, once we added the position object operator uh, by hitting tab and typing the name uh, you can just select the operator and pick the plane and hide it. So we've got 20,000 particles on this plane. And now, simply, it's just a matter of adding the hitting tab and adding the fluid force operator and picking up the Phoenix FD uh, grid. And now if I play it, you will see that we get this fluid motion of the particles that are looking really nice okay so you can see that we've got this really nice movement that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise right uh, and the other thing is that you can you can go ahead and increase the influence to like 200 so that will basically mean that the force will be multiplied by two and it'll be twice as strong so you'll see that we have got a different result here and it's very strong but I think uh, probably most of the times the default setting is just what you'll need. 
the only thing uh, you need to sort of uh, increase to get uh, a better and smoother and fluid looking effect is you need to increase the number of particles. So if I go to like what 200,000 particles you'll see that we've got a lot of particles but we will get a very nice fluid motion so just like that all right so you'll see that we've got these particles right and it's looking really nice I mean I really like the effect so in order to render this what you need to do is you'll add a shape operator so what I'm going to do is I'll add a shape and you want to select the type to be 3D and Geosphere low res and I'll hit tab add a scale operator go to display and set it to geometry because we want to see the geometry obviously they're too big now so we want to scale it down to like what even 20 percent and now you'll see that we have small particles but then they also look good when you look at them from afar and and that's like the magic of playing around with it so the more number of particles you have the smaller you need the particles to be to look cooler so yeah we can we, we can definitely increase this to even like two million and then just turn down the number of particles so it'll look uh, really nice so let's try that let's see what happens alright so we got two million particles here and it's looking really fluid really nice but now we may want to decrease the size of the particles a little bit lesser so you can you can definitely do that uh, you know go to the scale operator and set it to like even 15 or 12 for it to look really nice but I think yeah the more you go the better but just make sure that you have enough memory to process it so in this case I'm just gonna stick to uh, 200,000 so that it doesn't get too slow for the screen recording and my PC is not that great right so yeah I think this one just for the preview purposes is fine so for the rendering this out uh, you know what I basically did was I added a couple of lights from the top and the side view so I'm just gonna create one from the top for now so I'll just put it here and just like that and you just want to keep playing around with it so that you get the result that you want and make sure to add a mesh operator here and you can add your material and everything and for the render settings you just go to render setup and I'm just gonna quickly go through it so let's set this to V-Ray and go to the V-Ray tab make sure to set it to bucket and the noise threshold set it to 0.003 and go to GI, set it to the primary engine to urgence map, set it to low or very low. And you can just set up, uh, you know, the sequence of how many frames you want to render this out, depending on your animation. And you can put a product in the middle to make it look cooler in this case. All right. So, yeah, that's basically the effect that we wanted. So, you can, the more particles you have, of course, it's going to look more beautiful that's going to take more time and one other thing uh, for the final render you may want to export your particles uh, that's what I did to a tie cache just hit tab and uh, add an export particles operator tie cache you know set the timeline and set a destination and cache it because that'll be much more easier to uh, render especially if you're having heavy simulations okay so yeah, that's basically our effect for today and the tutorial. And if you have any ideas, any tutorial suggestions, make sure to tell me in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to do it. And if you have specific tutorial needs or you want to just support me or get the project file for this and some other amazing tutorials, you can just go and join my Patreon page. So thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care.